Okay, we are good to go. So this weekly inspiration is all about organizing paper in your home because let's face it, the biggest clutter headache that most of us deal with, even those of us that are organized, hi, Michelle, is um, paper because it comes in every day. It comes in in mail. It comes home from work. It comes from friends. It comes from family. It's constantly coming into our home. And that is why we need to set up not just one system, but systems for each um, type of paper that comes into the home. This will allow us to make sure that the paper, as soon as it enters, gets to its final resting place without getting lost on the trip in between. And that um, is the main focus of all the systems that we set up for our paper inside of the home. So the first thing that you want to do is assess the situation. And what I mean by that is you need to know exactly where your paper clutter is forming and um, exactly what is feeding that paper clutter. So the first thing that you want to do is walk your home and find out exactly where your clutter hotspots are. And what I mean by that is you, I like to be in the moment. So insight in mind is basically how I do all of my decluttering and organizing. I need to see the actual issue that I'm trying to correct so I can see how much there is, what the biggest headaches are, what bothers me the most and how I can make it and streamline it so it is um it's it's an organized process and not just a pile of random stuff so the first thing that you want to do is walk your home actually see where does the paper start end up um grow inside of your home and we're talking about mail this could be school papers newspapers receipts invitation correspondence magazines all of those um, areas are what you're going to be looking at. So actually walk your house, get a clipboard, a piece of paper, post-it notes, whatever it is that works best for you. And whenever you see a pile of paper clutter, I want you to make a note of that because you need to know where it is forming so you can create a system in that exact spot to make the transformation from clutter to organize more seamless. Okay. So once you know exactly where your clutter areas are, the next thing you need to do is gather your supplies. And for this um, project, it's going to be any baskets that you have. And I know whether you're cluttered or organized, you have a stash of baskets somewhere in your home. And this is any baskets going to work. It's going to be wicker baskets, plastic bins, small totes. Anything is going to work. If you have a cardboard box, that will even work. The, the goal is to get the size that matches the paper that you want to put inside. So if you're looking for a basket for receipts, a smaller basket will work. If you're looking for a basket for newspapers, obviously you're going to need a bigger bin, basket, box, whatever it is you're using. So um, as you're gathering up the containers, make sure you keep in mind or have the list with you that you just made when you walked your home of the exact hot spots in the home so you know what sizes you need. Now, if you're afraid you're not going to remember, as you're walking the home looking for your clutter hotspots, go ahead and write down a few ideas that you can use to contain those papers and write it right next to the list that you made as you're walking through the home. Now, you you once you get all of the baskets together, the next thing that you want to do is walk the home and actually put those baskets into place. Now, if this is the first time that you've done this, what you would what the best way to do it is when you find the hot spot, put the basket in that place of the paper pile and actually put the papers inside of the basket. Don't gather up the papers and take them someplace to sort. For right now, we're just setting up systems to keep the clutter paper issue from getting any worse than it is today. So put the paper that you see inside of the basket and put the basket exactly where you found that pile of paper. Now, when you're looking for um, areas to put baskets for clutter hotspots, here's a few ideas. You can have a basket just for the daily mail. Now, when I first started utilizing this tip, I actually kept the basket on my kitchen counter. Why? Because that's where we tossed the mail every single time we came home. And then as we um, evolved in our organizing journey, the basket then moved into the office. So then the mail that was on the kitchen counter immediately got put into the basket in the office. And then as we evolved still further, we set up a full mail organizing system. So now the mail 
goes on the, from the counter, goes into the office and gets sorted immediately. But if you are just starting out, your goal is to set up a mail basket exactly where you're tossing the mail right now. So if it's a table in your entryway, that's where you want to put the basket. If it's on a kitchen counter, that's exactly where you want to put the basket. If it's on the coffee table next to your chair in the family room, that's where you want to put the basket. I suggest labeling this basket because it will remind you exactly what goes in there. As you keep decluttering, as you keep organizing, as you keep setting up new systems, working your way through. Hi, Edna. Hi, Sandy. Um, you're training yourself to take the next step with your clutter. Because remember, what is clutter? It's anything that doesn't have a home. And our job is to give everything a home, even the paper clutter. So if you have a spot for the Daily Mail, then you know exactly where it goes when it comes into the house. And instead of tossing it on the counter, making it clutter, you're putting it into the basket that still may be on the counter, but the basket is now the mail's home. Once you put the mail in the basket, it's no longer clutter, it's put away. So that is the process that I want you to start getting used to. Taking the next step, instead of just tossing it and going, you're going to put it where it belongs, and that's going to slowly eliminate all the visual clutter that you have now throughout your home. You can also have a basket for each family member, and this is exactly my um, mail system that I have now. So my kids do not live at home anymore, but they still get mail. So whenever the mail comes in, if I get mail for my one son, I'll put it in his basket. If I, if I get um, an ad for my other son, I'll put it in his basket. And I'm able to sort the mail all the way down. So the only thing that's left is stuff for my husband, stuff for myself, and things that need action on, such as bills or correspondence or um, magazines or newspapers. You can also have a basket just for your spouse. Now, we did not utilize this right away, but once we did, oh my gosh, what a game changer that was. So I can put his mail in there. I can put um, anything that I need done. His honey-do list can go in there. Things that I found that I want him to read, magazine articles. I'll put little notes on him that says, have you read this article? Um, go ahead, check it out. Let me know what you think. Because we don't always see our spouses when those ideas pop into our heads. So when you have a landing place for those post-it notes and scrap pieces of paper to go, then that's another um, that's another cluttered item that you've given a home and you're able to take it to the next step and put it away. You could set up a bin for weekly errands. This is just a bin where you can keep coupons, you can keep returns, you can keep um, tags for dry cleaning, you can keep prescriptions that need to be picked up, everything inside of that one basket. And whenever you run your returns, or have your errand day or whatever it is, you can actually take this entire bin, put it in your car and just do all of the items found inside. Again, instead of having those random notes of things that you have to do and hoping you remember all of the tasks that need to be done on errand day, you're giving it a home. And now you know everything's going to get done. Nothing's going to get forgotten. You're not going to forget to pick up your prescription. You're not going to forget to get coffee because you ran out. Everything's right there inside of that bin. Toss bills and other important papers in a high action basket or you can use a drawer. This is what I do. I used to have a basket, but now I have an actual bill paying drawer. So any bill or financial papers that need to be taken care of in a certain time frame, they go right into my bill paying drawer and I don't have to worry anymore that it's going to get forgotten because bills get paid one time every single week. So I know worst case scenario, it's going to have a seven day timeline, but more often than not, that is a fraction of what you normally have, no matter what bill or financial paper comes in the mail. Extra areas to consider would be a family command center. And we have a think a whole module in Podia that you can check out on that. I also have an article over at declutterinminutes.com for family command center ideas. If you're looking for different organizing options, you can go ahead and check that out. A reading nook. This could be a chair and um, an area in your family room. This could be a reading bag that you take from location to location whenever you want to sit down and read a magazine or a book. I have an article on that as well at declutterminutes.com. And then magazine organizers. If you subscribe to magazines and they're magazines that you like to keep, then you may want to set up a few vertical organizers for your top magazines and then consider recycling the ones that are a little bit older.
If you decide to do the magazine organizers, I do want to caution you that you have to give yourself a line in the sand. Tell yourself you're only going to keep 10 of each and then anything more than that needs to be donated. This will keep your collection from getting out of hand, but still allow you to keep what you enjoy um, reading and um, paging through or whatever. Okay. Next up are paper systems. So this is more than just organizing an area. This is actually a spot where an activity takes place. So you have a bill paying area. And in that area, you're probably going to have a basket or a drawer for your bills. You're going to have a container that holds highlighters, pencils. Um, you're going to have your calculator. You're going to have your passwords. You're going to have your budget and your ledger and anything else that happens when you pay the bills. So when you're setting up a system for paying bills, you want to make sure it's in an area where that activity is actually going to take place. You also need a system for your receipts. And we'll look at a couple um, ideas later on in this slideshow. But receipts should not be all over the home. And if they are, this is an easy fix for you to do. Set up a system for all the receipts to go. So if you have a return or you need a receipt for um, deducting expenses for a business or um, you need to do your Ibotta um, savings, whatever it is, knowing all your receipts are getting put in the same place all the time will help you to stop wasting time searching for things and know exactly where all the stuff is. And that's what systems are meant to do. Stop you from wasting time. Stop you from spending all of this time searching for things. Oh, thank you, Michelle, for getting that link. And just, and, and to help you streamline not only the paper, but also the activities that you do in your home. Um, again, there's the command center, whether you have kids or not, I highly recommend having a family command center. It's just a great hub of your home where all the important things are. You can have your takeout menus there. You can have phone numbers there. You can have information on your top appliances there in case you need to get a repair done. You can have information on your pets. You can have medical information and prescriptions. It can all be right there. So that way, if you have any questions or you need to do correspondence or there's an issue that you need to take care of, you know exactly where everything is. You also need to have a recycling area. And if you don't have one, we have a couple ideas later in the slideshow that you might want to take a look at. Um, again, having random newspapers or plastic bottles or cardboard boxes in a pile in your garage is is not a streamlined system for paper. It's just another eyesore. Seeing that pile of mangled papers is just going to bother you. And that's what clutter does, it bothers you. So by giving you a system, it allows you to get rid of the eyesore and, and streamline things all the way to the end. And that is what a recycling center does. And then a home management binder, which I accidentally just talked about a few seconds ago with the command center, that's what a, um, that's a binder that has all of your main things inside. So it's easier for you to access papers as you need them. Okay. So let's look at a few organizing ideas that you can use for paper that comes into your home. And this one, because we are starting to gather up our papers for taxes, I wanted to start here first. You don't have to really have an elaborate system for your papers. And I'm all about easy. This is actually my organizer of taxes. I have probably 10 years of taxes in this container. And I don't have anything labeled. It's all just in there. It's one of those portable file containers. I have it in my office at all times because I need to access these numbers for student loans and other financial reasons. I don't keep them in my attic where I used to. But now um, I have this in this organized tote that's easy to move around. It's easy to store right on my bookshelf. And if I do need papers, it's right there. It doesn't take me a long time to find things and to access any files. Uh, Vanessa said, I have a receipt spike, which my elder son made when he was he was a, in school many moons ago. I sort it by weekly in the tax file, work receipt, bag, et cetera. I love that idea, Vanessa. That's awesome. Now, if you're like me and you have a lot of mail coming in right now for your taxes, and I have a file folder in my drawer, but sometimes I get so much mail in, I don't want to open the drawer. I don't want to open the file, put everything in. I just want to toss and go. So I just set up an extra tote. I labeled it 2020 and any mail that comes in, I just throw right inside of that tote. And then when I am ready to start organizing papers for my taxes, I can just grab that bin. Everything's right there. It, it just allows me to stop paper clutter 
and set up a system that works specifically for me. And that's something that you want to keep in mind. You want to set up systems that you know you're going to be able to stick with. So if easy is how you roll, then one step organizers like a basket such as this is going to be what works best for you. If pretty is how you roll, then you may want to use some of the organizers I'm going to show later in the slideshow. Whatever encourages you to stick with a system is the path that you want to take when you're setting up a, a streamlined process. Keep warranties in binders. I learned this tip a really long time ago. No, it's not pretty, but boy, is it effective. I just got these great big binders and I got Velcro. Um, what do you call those? Velcro organizers. And they, they literally come to be about two inches thick once they're completely full. You can probably keep two per binder. And that's why I have things streamed down in such. Um, it, that's why I have things in bigger areas so that I can get a lot more in there. So. Just by having the warranties organized by room or by type, it allows me and my husband to find anything that we need if there's any issues on any of our appliances. Um, Vanessa said, I have a pretty book look box for each tax year. I buy them when they're on sale at Michael's or Joann's. Oh, that's a great idea. So Vanessa, you're a pretty organizer and you know that you are that way. So that way you can keep feeding whatever allows you to stick with the system. So that's great. Keep receipt systems easy. This is actually my receipt system and this is how I have it set up. So it's it's a coupon organizer or maybe not. Maybe it's just an accordion organizer, but it's very small. It holds all 12 months and I can tuck receipts in behind each month. And then this way I can file as I go and I can just go ahead, put all the receipts in January as I'm going through the month of January. And this way, if I need to make a return or if I need to find a receipt quickly, it's all right there organized by month. Now, if you would rather just shove things in and organize things at the end of the month, this is a really great idea. This is like yours, Vanessa, with the nail, um, an empty tissue box. You could just sho shove everything right in there. And at the end of each month, you'll want to go through each one and organize it. Business expense, throw it away if it's not needed or um, anything else that you need to file for medical or for any of your kids. Kids school papers. This is one that I get a lot of questions on. And again, I like to do things really easy. Now, this is an organizer for my son who's 30 years old and it's held up all these years. So it's an accordion file. It has the accordion file that I purchased. It's just a paper one. It has 13 pockets in it. So I'm able to do kindergarten all the way up to a senior in high school. And I kept papers and artwork and report cards for each school year. And it's probably about five inches thick once it's all tied together. But now that's an easy thing for me to pass on to him when he's ready to get those school papers. Super simple to set up, does not take a lot of space. Um, and it's easy to put inside of his childhood memory tote and still add in a quite, um, quite a few more things if needed. Now, one of the biggest headaches that people complain about is mail. So that is the main thing that we are going to talk about in this slideshow is setting up a mail system. So the first one that I have is from lamorechesnus.wordpress.com. And this is one of those plastic office organizers. You can buy them at Staples, Office Supply, even Amazon.com. She had labels made for on the side. You can even do this with a label maker and everything just goes in once it comes into the home. So she is literally sorting mail as soon as it comes in. So now you can still have a basket to toss the mail in, but when you're ready to go through that mail at the end of each day, you can take it one step further and sort it all the way down the side. Now, your categories are going to be completely different from um, hers, but this at least gives you an idea of what it will look at like and how little space this type of organizer will actually take. This is another version. This is from brightandblithe.wordpress.com. And this is one she actually made. She sewed this and hung it on the inside of a door. Again, sorting it as it comes in, however you need to do it to make sure that everything gets taken to the next step and important financial papers do not get buried in a pile of random papers. You can also do this to match your style. So if you like the metal baskets, well, this is from, oh, I can't even see that. 
uh, bowl full of sunshine, I think it is, .com. And this, again, she just has three categories, mail, action, and bills. So she has a random mail either coming in or going out on top. Anything that needs to have something done, that would be correspondence or um, RSVPs or I, I don't know, uh, budgets or whatever, or um, statements. That's what I'm thinking. Statements. And then at the bottom is bills. I'm thinking nowadays there's not going to be many of us that actually have paper bills. But if you do, this is something to keep in mind when you're setting up a mail sorting system. You can also sort out the important, and this is organizinghomelife.com. She just has two of these, bills to file, bills to pay. So her office is actually in a cabinet in her kitchen, and that's where my office used to be when my kids were younger. Not because I didn't have a place to pay bills, but because when my kids were younger, we were always in the kitchen. That's where they ate. That's where they did art projects. That's where they did their homework. So I always like to multitask. So while they were doing their homework, I could pay my bills and answer any mail that came in. So um, that's just something to keep in mind as well. You can also make it fun. So if this is something that if you're a visual organizer like Vanessa is, this might be more your speed. Having something that matches your style, that um, doubles as art on the wall, that you can put things in and keep the clutter off the counters and still make it all fun so it encourages you to continually use it. That's something that you want to keep in mind. And this is from domesticimperfection.com. Or you could keep it all business. This is very similar to the first one that I showed you. Um, again, you just buy these at the office store, put a few labels on the side so it's easier for you to see. If you put them on the front, the papers are going to cover them up. So if you keep them on the side, you could just toss things in and keep all of that paper clutter organized and off the counters. This is from the decorfix.com. And like I said earlier, if you don't have a prof office, no problem. There are no rules when it comes to organizing your home. Whatever works for you works for you. And this um, uh, from designimprovise.com set up an office right in her kitchen cabinet. She's got a little corkboard down below. She's got paper files, files down below, pens, her laptop, and then all the important stuff up above. You have to do whatever works for you. And if you don't have the space, then sometimes you kind of need to create it. Um, if you're short on space, you can do this tip. And this is all magnetized on the side of a fridge. This is do it on a dime blog.com. It's hard to read those websites when it's all one word. But um, yeah, everything's magnetized. I love this because they have the open counter there for them to do all the work. But the important stuff is right there on the side of the fridge so they can keep track of schedules and budgets and everything else that they're working on. Use shortcuts for random papers. So if you have things that need to be filed, set up a basket for papers, papers that you eventually need to file. If you don't like to file as they come in, which I hate filing, I have a big bin that says to be filed on it. Anything that I'm done um, doing the action on gets tossed into that bin. And then the goal is to file all those papers at the end of each month. If I'm being perfectly honest, it does not happen every month, <laughs> but that is the goal. So you want to, again, set up a next step for your papers so that they're off the table, off the floor, and, and you don't have to worry about things getting lost. Then you want to sort through any paper that you have not done any action on at least once a week. And this is what I do on Sundays. That is my planning day. I pull out all the papers that are in my mail basket, that are in my mail center, that are in my weekly planning basket. I'll pull out all those papers. I'll either put a post-it note on them of the action that needs to be taken next. I'll either take the action that needs to be done next, or I'll put that paper in the next step area, the to be filed, the taxes, the errand bin, whatever it is. The important thing to remember is that you set aside time routinely, whether that be every week or every other week, to work on papers so that you don't have to worry that you're missing things. And that is the purpose of all these systems that we're setting up, to take the worry that things are falling through the cracks and actually implementing processes that get those papers from entering the home all the way to completed and filed away. Okay, set up a recycling area. This is something that I think is super important right now because if paper clutter is something you're um, dealing with right now, 
probably most of the problem is that you don't have a recycling center. So by setting one up, it'll allow you to take those papers all the way to done and get them off the floor or the counters or wherever they're at. So this is the first one. This is from laurasplans.com. She actually did these with um, wooden crates and you can buy these right at Walmart. I want to say they're $8.99. She painted them, painted on labels. And I love that she removed a few of the boards at the front. So the bottom ones you could get access in and out of. And she just has it sitting right outside her door in the garage. And it looks cute. It's easy to use and it's um, simple to keep up with. And the entire family can use it too. You can also reuse what containers you have. This is from betterhomesandgardens.com. And these are those plastic organizers. You can also use the drawers, the plastic drawers, which I think all of us probably own at least one. And you're probably not utilizing it. But this might be something you can use it for. You just need three for the main things, cans, plastics, and paper. Um, if you do four and you want to keep cardboard separate, you can absolutely do four. But three is basically the most that I think you may need. So basically shop your home first before you go looking for organizers that will work for a project. Always walk your home first and see what you have and you're not utilizing in the best way that you might be able to repurpose for a new project. You can also DIY one. And I love this one. It's from sunset.com. They basically took scrap pieces of wood and set up um, a lip so that they could put these organizers underneath and it keeps them from falling down. And then that way it keeps them off the floor, on the wall, and they could just take them out to the curb. We don't have recycling where we live. So we actually have to go to a center. So we're going to, so we need to have a system such as this. But for those of you that live in an area where they supply the organizing containers, this might be an option for you to get those containers up off the ground and making it easier for you and your family to utilize them. And remember, it doesn't have to be pretty. These are totes. They were just cut open. They took a marker, wrote exactly on the front what they wanted to put there, and they were able to stack them right in their garage. This is preppingmyhomestead.com. So it doesn't always have to be pretty. It just has to be effective. So if pretty is a big thing for you, you may not like this idea at all. But if you're just looking to get something in place right now to stop the leak so that you can start making process progress and fixing any issues that you have, this might be a quick fix that you can turn to for now and then work your way up to something more sophisticated or pretty, such as these ideas. Okay. Let's do a quick recap. Paper organizing tips recap. Number one, set up baskets and bins to toss in paper in any of your hot spots that you have right now. Have a bin just for high action papers, or you can have a drawer for high action papers, making sure you sort through those high action papers at least once a week. This will help you relax knowing that all of your important papers have a worst case scenario deadline of just seven days. Have a set day for paying your bills weekly. If, if that's too much for right now, at least start at every other week. I would not do once a month. I tried doing once a month and too many things fall through the crack in that timeline. By doing it every week, it just takes me 20 minutes to pay my bills and update my budget. And I know everything is up to date, current, and I don't have to worry about missing a payment or getting charged a late fee. Set up a recycling center, super important. If you don't have one set up, that is a great weekend mini challenge for you to work on this weekend. You saw a couple ideas, shop your home first, find containers that will work for the three main areas, cans, plastics, and paper, and get something set up in your garage today. The purpose of a recycling center is to get the paper to, to give the paper that comes into your home a final home. And that will allow you to stop the clutter from getting any worse than it is right now. And finally, set up systems for any common papers that you are dealing with routinely. This could be receipts, um, coupons, bills, anything that comes in constantly that you don't have a system set up for now.